Yeah? Okay. Perfect. All right. So first of all, I have to begin by thanking our opponents and the judge for being here. Uh, the U.S. Congress should authorize the uh, should authorize the military strikes on ISIS. Now, uh, the the agent would be Congress. The enforcer would be uh, Congress. The team would be uh, as soon as possible. Uh, the funding would be normal means. The judge would be uh, net benefits. Uh, it's, it's policy, so we are going to assume. Uh, oh, plan text. Sorry, uh, Congress uh, should, uh, should authorize Obama's air uh, air targeting strikes on ISIS. Um, wait. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, we're going to call uh, authorize give official permission and military strikes Obama's plans of targeted or uh, airstrikes against uh, Islam uh, Islamic uh, ISIS. All right. The first advantage would be would be the war on terror. Uh, uh, currently, the a uniqueness. Uh, currently, there are there, there are two continuing resolutions by Obama that is a president from the uh, war on terror uh, caused by the Bush administration. And he's using this to, as a president to continue uh, to use force on ISIS. Um, uh, so, uh, so it, it, the, the, the war, the war, uh, the War Powers Act is currently helping him move uh, his his plan forward. Uh, B, the plan. Uh, so, Congress authorizes the plan. Uh, uh, internal link, uh, C, internal link is just uh, that we would stop ignoring the WPA, and this ends the com uh, common law, uh, common law of war, and. Uh, and we're actually like, and we're actually enacting war. He's not just simply uh, going out and like striking uh, without like actually enacting and saying we are in a war. Uh, um, and, and future Obama will have to use court um, uh, for uh, and for court in action in Venezuela because he, uh, he, he's an impact. Uh, and future Obama will have to use uh, court action in Venezuela in, because he not he not uh, over abuse uh, his um, his uh, uh so, uh, he will not use the, uh, the war on terror, uh, and he will have to use war, which will decrease the amount of war that we have, because uh, it will now have to go through like the regular means uh, instead of just uh, using these uh, the two continuing resolutions. Um, so we will be decreasing war. And, uh, uh, secondly, we we'll, uh, will we'll go into politics. The second advantage: uh, a the uniqueness. Uh, Senate is going to is going to flip. Currently, Democrats are slightly ahead, but we are lo they are losing the Senate. Uh, the House Minority Leader, the Mitch McConnell, uh, would have to vote on this, uh, which means that he would actually lose, like the he would lose his Tea Party supporters, so he would lose his position. Uh, C. Uh, which, uh, what, this, what this means is that uh, Allison Allison Garns takes over, and so where the Republicans now have the uh, Senate. Uh, what, hap what happens is that uh, by we have to keep it in the Senate, uh, we have to keep the well, if we continue, with the, if we make the plan, uh, we will keep the hands, we will keep the Senate in the hands of the Democrats. So, if, um, so from uh, uh, so that we can continue and nominate uh, uh, with, with the judicial uh, nomin uh, nomin nomination. nominations, nominations, my bad, kind of uh, nominations uh, will help all move uh, women rights forward. Like the, the judge, uh, we will have more liberal judges that will be able to support things such as women's rights. And if we don't do that, if we don't do this, then we will lose it. All the Republicans will take over, and women's rights will be able to will be severely stunted and stagnated in terms of forward progress. Do you guys have any questions? So you said that the time frame is going to be as soon as possible. Does that mean that you're calling a special session, or are you? And we that we should do the plan as soon as possible. So we would uh, authorize the military strikes as soon as possible. So it would be immediately. The plan would yeah. be immediately. Okay. So where are the airstrikes that happen? Like, can you give me like an idea of what specifically we're trying to target? Currently, uh, the main places are like bases where ISIS is operating. Uh, recently, uh, there was a strike and it attacked, uh, it attacked um, like civilian civilian aid. And so, so what currently we're trying to prevent, we're, uh, we're trying to authorize the strike because like currently they're just kind of like moving forward and just like being random. So we have to like try to decrease this war and not, uh, yeah. And there are strikes in Syria and Iraq. Uh, Obama's plan has largely called for not not just airstrikes, but also the implementation of military ground forces. Are you going to be implementing that as well? No, we're, we're, uh, we're trying to keep the uh, boots off the ground. So what we're trying to do is strictly uh, authorize Obama's plans for targeted airstrikes uh, against the IS or uh, ISIS. Yeah, not uh, so boots off the ground. Any other questions? I don't think so. Yeah, I think we're okay.
Right. Uh, for those for the reasons, please select the front of your, uh, go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my timer, we're going to talk for a second, and then I'll stop it and I'll give you an order. Is that okay? Okay. Sure. Stop it and give you an order? Yes. That's fine.
personnel, which we are attacking, we say it's necessary at least when there's a substantial increase in civilian deaths because of the fact that the usage of these drones and the usage of airstrikes leads to more death overall. We say that this is uniquely harmful. The next argument is going to be turned that this is that the usage of airstrikes is devastating to the environment. The little egg under here is that it contaminates groundwater supplies. When, you, when we utilize things like airstrikes and uh, attacks, uh, attacks on countries, we say that we utilize things like depleted uranium shells, which are uh, which are sharper and are armor piercing when we're able to take out bunkers, it means that we are able to attack, we are able to get to targets where we say the usage of these depleted uranium shells uh, only is, are, is radioactive and is harmful to the groundwater supplies. We say this increases the amount of cancer and the amount of disease overall within, uh, within this area. And the usage of this airstrike is more harmful. It's a systemic impact, it's a structural impact. We are condemning entire populations and entire villages to, uh, to death as a result of the usage of these strikes. Additionally, we'll be, we say that the debris that happens as a result of these airstrikes tend to be very damaging. We're going to currently be using strikes against things like factory, like factories, which has causing chemicals to be uh, which causing the chemicals in manufacturing to spill into things like ground groundwater supplies and is causing contamination and so it's causing to aerosolize it means that these individuals are, are dying as a result. Addition to say that the strikes are called uh, strikes especially against factories are incredibly damaging to because those individuals lose access to their jobs and uh, if they don't lose their lives it means that they that they can't have any access to be able to feed themselves and be able to get the necessary money in order to be able to be able to survive. We say this substantially increases the effects of poverty within the region because it's individuals can't get the necessary things they need to survive. That's I'm going to keep We say that the, we say that the problem that the problem has to Respond to things like the things like military conflicts that are often rapidly changing. You look to the <coughs> Russian conflict as a current example that if Russia were to invade Ukraine tomorrow, we would not be would necessarily need to send military forces in order to be able to check back into Russia and say that uh, that in the world is always going to be harmed to get to resolve in the UN in order to do it to any kind of military forces so that stops any form of any form of being of United States Germany and so it would lead to a uh, worse conflict overall, but addition to say the Congress is uniquely bad because of the fact that not only does the War Powers Act allow for 90 days for Congress to make a decision, but also Congress is notoriously uh, bipartisan, not bipartisan, or else whole rights, part of the say that it would be that it's very used to conflict as a tool to get to the universe of the Congress or the Genesis. Bad, but the president needs to be able to respond to conflicts in a way that is unbiased to be able to respond to this. But addition to say that the only impact in our story that you tell on this is that of Venezuela, and that we have to utilize uh, Congress in order to do this. First, you don't explain why we necessarily have to use Congress in order to do this. But addition to second, we say that there's no impact why, as, as to why we would necessarily want to approve conflict in Venezuela. But additionally, if I have to say that one instance is not going to spill over to another, just because of the fact that Obama is going through uh, through Congress on this instance does not mean that he will. My time is good. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, it does not necessarily mean that mean that he will continue uh, continue to go through Congress in the future. There's no spillover on this fact. But on to advantage two of midterms. The first argument is that Democrats are going to hold, and this is not unique, because Democrats are going to hold the Senate now. The little A's, even though the Senate Majority Leader, Harry Reid, said that they will retain this and retain the majority in the status quo, but the little B's that they have specific leads in key areas, such as Colorado, New Hampshire, Alaska, and North Carolina, where these are Democratic incumbent seats that are going to make the difference in the election, but the little C is that Democrats are also outspending and outraising and Republicans to one. The Republicans are only have only have raised $31 million as of last week, but, Republic, uh, but Democrats had $62 million, which means that they are necessarily outspending in the status quo, but additionally, the Next argument is going to be the turn. The plan actually causes Republicans to take the Senate. The first argument is the plan of this allows them to change, change the narrative of the election to become more about defense, uh, defense and, uh, and military spending, which is what where, where Republicans, this is where Republicans cut their teeth, that this is always where Republicans can be strong. In addition, second, say that the calling of a special session in order to be able to approve this means that you're taking away those incumbents out of their districts where they have to be campaigning. It means that this necessarily means that they won't be able to uh, have that campaigning, which means that Democrats will lose. Thank you. Just in case it happens again, I'm going to move a little bit
strikes we should talk about the boots on the ground so basically they say that with theirs and that ground and the loss of count they talk about how the uh, airstrikes is a limiting definition that we bring up for the case and they're, they're saying that we need to talk about the combat boots on the ground and we're seeing that there's an unequally uh, there's a loss of equity within the equal access of the round but what I say is that we meet the definition we meet as in the terms of the resolution at the hand, at hand we are meeting the definition and we're winning this case uh, sorry we're winning we're going to win this team because essentially we are doing what the resolution says. We are being in a way they are at you. There is no negative ground. What's going on essentially is that they, they claim that there's a loss of counter plans, but they have addressing to our advantages. They have a solvency argument against our case. They have voters that they say that why they turn on the vote advantages. They allow the Republicans to win. In their worldview, they are essentially addressing all of our cases and all of our stranded structures. So there is ground. There is a fair educational debate going on here. If this is not a fair educational debate, I don't know what it is. But basically, what's going on in here? They're saying the loss of equity equal access to the round. They have equal access to the round. They're talking about how the Republican nominations, they're talking about how they're referencing certain states and certain things like that. Like that. They're talking about how ISIS is recruiting and how this plan is essentially going to recruit. They have aggressions to our advantages and aggressions to the case overall. And there is no loss of ground here. Essentially, we are having an educational debate and therefore the round continues. The competitive interpretations are basically BS because essentially what they're saying for is combat on the boots on the ground. But we're following the status quo. The status quo is that there's targeted airstrikes against the Islamist militants and ISIS and that's the status quo and that's the burden upon the government team. It's to not go beyond the status quo is that but we're not adding on to a bombs plan or doing anything like that. We're following the bombs plan but we're saying that we're doing is we're going to have Congress authorize it. This is a fair educational debate. We're saying that we meet this definition. We meet the criterion of, the, of this debate and therefore we are winning uh, this team. And uh, for the voter of equity and equal access to the round, again, I've already addressed this loss of uh, the, this is the idea of competing interpretations where we're including boots on the ground is irrelevant because in this case and in this defensive argument, we're not really talking about boots on the ground. The only boots on the ground are some, some of the supporting countries that are against ISIS, just as France has talked about putting boots on the ground in Germany because they're actually in the vicinity and the area and the close by. And if you look at Turkey's actions against ISIS as well, we can talk about their boots on the ground. But since we're so far away, even though we have military bases around the countries, we can't actually talk about ISIS being boots on the ground because where status quo is air strikes. So therefore, we are meeting this definition. We are talking about the status quo. We're talking about what's relevant and we're having a fair educational debate. We're furthering how we can talk about how real world issues affect daily lives every day. So therefore, we're meeting this definition. We're being reasonable and reasonability is on the government side. Now let's go on to their sovereignty argument. They, saw, they say we're actually galvanizing ISIS. ISIS basically works out of their Iraq and Syrian uh, bases. That that's us, how they recruit uh, French, uh, UK, and other ways of recruitment. But basically, if you destroy these bases, there is nothing left. There's no foundation. They need a foundation to work off of. They don't have bases in other countries, they have ways to talk to other countries, they have in some other recruitments in other countries, but where is the recruitment? Because they are actually winning. This is a real threat. This is the biggest terrorist threat in the entire but basically, by Fox News and CNN, they have all agreed that this is a huge, huge problem. ISIS, because why? Because they're winning. They're winning because they're recruiting. That's they're recruiting because they're winning. And people see that this is the first Islamic uh, reaction to the Western civilization and also by the various other causes. So they want to create an Islamic state. And ISIS is winning. And that's how they're recruiting because they're actually effective. And therefore, if you negate their, if you mute their effectiveness by basically air striking all their bases and uh, uh, basically FOB forward operation bases and other things of that nature, and we stop their expansion by these airstrikes, we're going to stop their recruitment. So basically turn on that. So we're going to turn on, basically they're going to stop recruiting because they're going to be on the losing side because the U.S. has gotten directly involved. And therefore, we're, they're going to lose recruitment and they're going to lose any opposition position because we're going to destroy their FOBs. Now going on to the, the fact of the matter is we're going to turn both advantages and talk about allows Republicans to win because this will become a narrative of defensive defensive advantage and the, uh, to the Republican side. Well, I actually uh, like to argue because the Tea Party will actually lose on Mitch McConnell because he is compromised. And the, if you go to the Tea Party website, it's nothing but compromisation. So if you don't have actual support to back up your claim, they cannot say that the Republicans will win the House because the Republicans have to concede because Congress has to pass Obama's law. So therefore, Republicans do not win the House uh, because they have conceded to a Democratic, uh, a Democrats, uh, basic uh, plan. And therefore, they, uh, what they fail to realize, they talk about the civilian death and the, the, the three-second delays. Again, this plan is not just created out of the air, Judge. 
But basically, this plan is targeted airstrikes. We know exactly what we're going to do. We're not going into civilian areas with, uh, it's not like where it's Egypt and, uh, sorry, no, it's not like where Israel and Palestine, where it was like always human civilians there. And basically, we had to make a choice. We had to airstrike, but we had to get a lot of civilian casualties. No, that is not the case here. We're looking at severe bases. We're looking at military operations. We're looking at direct conflicts on the ground. We're not looking at first responder. We're looking at militants here. Judge, basically, they have taken over cities and made, made them militarized, and we know exactly what's going on. We have people on the inside, Judge. If you look at the new YouTube videos coming out of people, actually spies of ISIS showing how world under ISIS, we know various other strategies. The U.S. Department of Defense is not stupid, Judge. We know exactly where they are. Uh, I'll, I'll, at the bottom of my on case where you address my advantage number two, I'll address your question. If I actually basically at the end of the speech, if I have the time, I'll go over time. Um, I'll go into protected time and answer your question if I have to. Now going on to airstrikes. So basically let's talk about environmental damage that they depleted during the shells. And let's talk about how shells will cause cancer. And then basically uh, condemning populations and basically this is going to be a systematic destruction of uh, people, deaths, and lives. But what we don't understand, we have to look at the president. Let's look at the president though before we did airstrikes or invaded a country. There was always some sort of power vacuum. And what we did within that power vacuum, we stabilized into <coughs> some sort of form of government. Now a form of government like the Kurds or things we people we like to see uh, lead Iraq or people we like to see have a portion of Iraq, we see that there's a vacuum power. If ISIS is gone, there's no actual government to control within that region. So what we see that the U.S. will actually intervene. That actually, the world powers, just like after World War II, we needed to sign the Jews to a place, so we created the land for them. That's kind of what we do after we destroy a, a huge part of land. We actually try to revitalize it. We try to do things where we can bring it back up with this uh, stable democracy or stable form of government. If you look at precedent of, uh, precedent of attacks we've done before on certain nations and foreign lands, in terms of not just the U.S., but other countries that are actually supporting the attack on ISIS, if you look at their precedents too, they say that we support an, uh, an aggression of we should help the people, kind of like a just war kind of thing. After we've done the destruction, after we've uh, yeah, gotten rid of ISIS, we should help the people revitalize and rehabilitate themselves. Um, so again, basically we stop this, uh, we basically we address the condemning population, we address the environmental damage, we will help solve for this, uh, looking at where, this is not an extra part of plan or extra uh, moving target or anything of that nature, we're just saying precedent of airstrikes or things that we've done on other countries is, uh, stating that we, there is a power vacuum and we try to fill that power vacuum with the locals that are there that are affected by this area and we will help them manage, manage financially and things of that nature. So, advantage number one. So basically we go on to, again, address that. There, uh, uh, basically there's a 90 day delay within Congress and we have a polarized uh, conflict of political tools. So, uh, so basically, they talk about how there's a confliction, and that basically this will become a political tool. But what they, what they fail to realize, it doesn't matter. Congress will pass the law to actually get effect done. Whether or not it used as a political tool, it doesn't really matter because essentially things are being done in their world. They want to keep it the way it is. They want to keep it in a world where um, basically nothing is being done to, towards ISIS, and where Congress is essentially not allowed in this, and it allows for a president to, to do this. And again, going on to the uh, Venezuela conflicts of the and uh, again. Going on to uh, if, uh, the, what they have to say about the Venezuela conflict. If the conflicts go, we will go to enter in a conflict where there will be U.S. debts because essentially Obama is not uh, sufficient enough to address these policies. And uh, an advantage number two, my partner will address uh, most of the stuff. So thank you. <coughs> I would like topicality on top, yep. followed by advantage two, and then um, advantage one, and then the solvency arguments. On the top, Kelly, you can extend there. We need the. Uh, we're not going for this sheet of paper. I didn't hear an RBI, but even, even if you did hear one, RBI is never going to be a reason that you're going to be voting for the affirmative because there's no reason that the negative team should win or the affirmative team should win just for being topical. On to advantage two. On advantage two, you can extend all of Corey's non-uniques. 
His first argument is that Senator Reid says that the predictions right now show the Democrats winning. His second argument is that Democrats are leading in crucial states that are up for re-election right now, specifically Colorado, Colorado, Alaska, and New Hampshire, I believe, were his examples. The next one, and probably the most important one, is that Democrats are outspending and out-fundraising Republicans two to one right now. 96% of candidates win based on the amount, or sorry, 96% of candidates who win are the candidates who want, spent the most money in their election for their campaign. This just goes to prove that Democrats are going to be able to wipe the clocks clean of the Republicans come November. The next argument that you can extend is Cora's Lindturn about how the Republicans are going to be able to take this and use it to change the narrative to one of defense and military spending. This probably has a couple of important meetings that we need to be evaluating. First, when Republicans are able to paint the picture that the United States is at war, they have an easier time fundraising. You can look to Bush's re-election campaign where he had a very easy time raising campaign funding because we were at war in two different nations at that point in time. It's probably a reason why it would be pretty problematic for the uh, Republicans to be able to portray the United States as in a state of war. But the next argument that, uh, the next reason that this would be bad is because Republicans are more dominant in issues of uh, defense and military spending because they take a more realist perspective and they are better able to present campaign platforms that are appealing to individuals who are concerned about our foreign policy is a reason why this would just cause the uh, impacts that they describe. The next argument that you can extend is that this special session would take Democrats away from their campaigning that they're going to do right now. This Link turn says that Democrats are not going to be able to continue to fundraise and that this would actually cause problems for Democratic Democrats to be able to continue to, um, uh, to uh, outspend their Republican opponents, which would trigger the impact scenario of my opponents. And the point which they never answer any of this coming out of the MG, we're never going to be giving them new access during the PMR. Um, this is going to hurt Democrats' chance. Yeah, and this is not going to be like an easy floor vote. There will be debate. It will take <coughs> Right, moreover, this isn't just going to pass through in like a second and a half. Every time that we authorize war, we tend to think about it a little bit. We find it relatively important. You have a good? Yeah. Cool. Terror. The first argument that I want you to extend is Cora's argument about how presidential power is good because we need the ability to have rapid reaction time. His example is uh, Russia and the Ukraine, where this would be a considerably worse conflict if the United States didn't have the ability to deploy our military overnight. It means that this is only going to cause problems for the United States international relations in the future because it completely guts our hard power. It means that we are never going to have access to use this as leverage against other countries. It means that other countries are going to be able to step all over the United States while we wait for Congress to duke it out over whether or not we're going to authorize military action. They don't respond to this, so we're never going to be the new access in the PMR. The next return that you can extend is that uh, uh, Congress is a partisan political tool. The only response that they uh, make to this is that, um, I'm sorry, Corey, did you have this? It sounded like they were saying Republicans wanted to keep it so that nothing is being done to ISIS right now. Yeah, they did. Uh, th this is not directly responsive, nor does it address the fact that Congress uh, routinely uses issues like uh, large magnitude issues as political tools. You can look to the government shutdown that happened a few months ago when Congress had the opportunity to completely stall something over a few diehard issues that they have. The opportunity will be taken. So there is going to be uh, other policy that will always be attached to U.S. action in the future, which is necessarily going to delay or cause problematic policy to come alongside U.S. military action. The next argument that you can go to is... Um, Corey's arguments on the impacts, the no impacts arguments. Uh, the only response to these no impacts arguments is that we're going to be entering a conflict where there are going to be U.S. deaths. However, this doesn't explain why we are at a propensity to go to war with Venezuela right now or uh, why um, there, there isn't the uniqueness to support this impact scenario. They don't describe a situation where the United States is at a prob has a probability of going to war with Venezuela at present. It means that when they don't read uniqueness for this, we're never going to be getting giving them access to these impact scenarios. Moreover, when these impact scenarios aren't terminalized coming out of the uh, out of the PM or the MG, we're never going to be giving them access to new terminalization of the BMR. No spillover. Okay. And there's also no spillover to other conflicts. Oh right, you can extend for argumentation that there's no spillover to other conflicts. Yeah, just because we don't get an authorization here doesn't mean we do it in the future. Right, just because we get an authorization here doesn't mean that we have to wait for it in the future. They're not creating a law that says that we need to have a congressional authorization before anything happens. They're not repealing the WPA. The War Powers Act is still going to exist, and Obama is still going to send the military wherever he feels like, or whenever he feels like. But even if that were the case, that what they were saying is there, uh, even if that were the plan, that would probably be pretty problematic, and the link terms that we put above would apply here. On to the solvency arguments. Yeah, cool, solvency. Uh, first on ISIS. 
their first argument is that ISIS doesn't have a foundation in other countries and that they only have forward operating bases and very limited uh, uh, and established base systems in Iraq and in Syria. However, the ISIS does not grow this way. ISIS is very largely a guerrilla warfare based kind of tactic, which is why it has been so effective against the Iraqi national government. You can look to ISIS who is taking a very specific town by town growth rate. They are not creating forward operating bases, but are rather living among civilians because they are the civilians. They make up the more radical civilians that live in Iraq and in Syria right now, and that is why this military force has been so effective because it's so difficult to pinpoint them. To attack them is necessarily to attack the civilians that they live around. What this means is that they, we are going to see larger recruitment. As we kill more civilians, more people are going to be upset with the United States, and ISIS is going to be able to grow its control over Iraq because the, this is going to be seen as the only opportunity to provide in, uh, to provide um, a re rebellion essentially against the United States government. This is the only way that individuals will see their ability to counter the United States government's interaction or then the Western interaction in this area means that uh, this is necessarily going to increase recruitment. The next argument that I go for is uh, at, the, uh, at the bottom of this link turn, or at the, of this case turn where Corey's talking about how this is going to harm elections. Their only response here is that the Tea Party is going, uh, going to lose now because this looks like a compromise. However, this isn't responsive to what Corey says. Corey says that this is going to change the uh, election as a result of the creation of defense rhetoric. You can cross apply all of those out uh, that argumentation here. The Tea Party argumentation doesn't specifically explain why it is that um, Democrats are necessary, uh, doesn't respond with Corey's argumentation about Democrats losing on defense rhetoric. On the next solvency argument, uh, civilian deaths as a result of drugs. Uh, the only response that my opponents make here is that there are severe bases that are created by uh, ISIS. However, this is not backed up in the literature. If you look at how ISIS is growing right now, it is creating guerrilla warfare. The warrant that proves this is why ISIS has been so effective in fighting the Peshmerga Kurds. The Kurds, uh, the Peshmerga Kurds, have been very effective in countering traditional military tactics. However, they have been losing against ISIS because ISIS also wages guerrilla warfare. It means that they don't have one local area where the Peshmerga can go and attack and break down the base because ISIS is constantly moving and changing. They're never the same uh, organization from day to day means that this argumentation is simply unfounded. There isn't the literature to back this up, and the Peshmerg argumentation proves this means that the civilian deaths are going to happen as a result of drones, so you can extend all of Corey's argumentation about how we're going to be killing first responders, and this is necessarily going to lead to more deaths, because when you kill the doctors, and when you kill the medics, then there's no one to save the individuals who are hurt in collateral damage in the first place. The next argument that you can look to is the third argument about the environment. The uh, only response that they make here is the creation of a power vacuum. However, the, uh, the Iraqi national government is the reason uh, we still down our involvement right now. There is a government in place that can't control Iraq. They are just having trouble fighting this guerrilla warfare, but when, um, sorry, Corey, what are we going to go on here? Uh, you want that we're still doing the strikes, that's the thing that matters. Right, we're still doing the strikes. We're not just going through Congress, so we're not creating a power vacuum by pulling out overnight. The Iraqi national government and the United States in combination are going to be able to resolve these issues. I would like you to put the LOR on one sheet of paper. I'm going to be referencing specific arguments, but I won't be going in the specific order. I'm leaving largely an overview and a discussion of the matters. Everybody? Cool. Here's how this round is going to come down. The affirmative does not have a single impact that is left that is left at the end of the debate. The impacts that they are going for, they do not impact, they do not terminalize that any of the any risk of the solitary we give you either about how it's going to galvanize ISIS and expand those conflicts or about how it's going to hurt civilians or how it's going to damage the environment is going to outweigh. But looking specifically to some of these arguments on the midterm study, this is going this is going to be an easy discussion for you. The MG just does not get here with enough time and we straight turn this advantage when they're giving the non-uniques about how the Repo about how Democrats are going to retain the Senate now and how this is going to and how the plan is going to call Republicans to take over. And they can see all of these arguments about how Republicans are better on defense about how they get this allows for them to get more spending and all of these arguments we can see is going to be straight from the advantage. PMR might try and go for some of these energy arguments about how this means that like the, the Republicans will lose the House, but all of the impacts that they talk about, specifically about traditional nominees, about how it's going to allow the Democrats to push through with their, uh, through court judges that are going to be good for women's rights. These are the impacts they go in, they're going for, which means that when we win the specific analysis about the Senate, they, this means we turn and get those impacts. But in addition, this means that the midterm discussion is over, and the PMR does not, and the PMR does not get new answers. But addition on advantage one, they do not get, they do not respond to any of the defensive arguments that we are giving you, both about how we, do, we don't understand why we're going to go to war in Venezuela. This is what the PMC says that we're going to go through Congress in order to in order to have conflict with Venezuela. They do not explain this argument, which means that you will not be evaluating it at the end, and don't let the PMR come up here and try, and try to expand on it. But additionally, I want you to look specifically to the arguments and the argument that goes conceded about how there is no spillover. Just because Obama goes through Congress on this one doesn't mean he's going to go through it in the future. 
There's no justification for that. And to try to make this precedent argument, you can look to the fact that Obama has authorized airstrikes without congressional approval in the past, how he's gone through and, 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 authorize, and to send military forces in the past into multiple regions and multiple areas, and there are no reasons to why, as to why he, will, why he will listen to Congress in the future, especially if it's a Republican Congress. Come on. But additionally, this means that if anyone does not have any impacts, which means you could probably vote on presumption, on presumption which we're not going to ask you to do that. But this means that, that any risk of the solvents here means when we are impacting them to the point of all of this conflict and all of these civilians that are going to die as a result of it is going to outweigh. Yes, but also when we control advantage too. Additionally, when we control advantage too, especially, there's no justification as to why advantage one would ever possibly outweigh. Uh, but looking specifically to some of, the, to some of these solvency arguments, I want you to look to the impacts that we are giving you out of the LFC that, J, that Jacob expand, expand, expands on the AMO. That when we are galvanized, when you when you take these airstrikes, it's going to have a couple of effects. Not only is it going to allow pretty expanding of ISIS recruitment just based on the way that ISIS functions, that they are in the middle of towns, and that the United States does things like a double tap policy that blows up first responders, that is not a good thing. It's going to allow for ISIS to expand their control and have expanding recruitment. Not only does this turn the entirety of the case, we say that it makes the conflict substantially worse. That alone is going to out, is going to outweigh any risk of going through Congress for a for a conflict in Venezuela. But additionally, we say that they that the end that they completely concede all of the environment impacts that are independent of the rest of the ISIS discussion. That when we utilize things like airstrikes, we utilize things like depleted uranium shells that contaminate water supplies, and we strike places like factories that have chemicals that are damaging to the that damaging to the environment and contaminate water supplies. When you contaminate those water supplies, that destroys entire populations, subjects them to disease and death. We say that that's going to substantially outweigh any of the risk of any of the impacts that they are going for. These are also systemic and cyclical impacts into the future because when you contaminate a water supply, it means that that, it means that, that is the water supply that they get drawn from for years into the future. It's not just a one-time impact. It means that entire generations are, su are subject to the death and destruction as a result, which means that those impacts will always outweigh and do not allow for the PMR tribe to answer these, these arguments because they were not responding to the EMG, which means you will be voting for the bad CN. Liberal uh, senators, and we will end up having. 
the role of judges at the moment. And uh, we will have, and we will lose uh, many in, uh, instances of women's rights, and which is one of the impacts of this round. All right. Non the voter issues. All right. Uh, on the T, we need. Uh, we show that the education is the value of the debate. There is no uh, negative. There is no uh, damage to negative ground. Uh, we show that we are staying in the status quo, which is the burden of the affirmative. We're not trying to go. Uh, we're not trying to uh, uh, extend, uh, extend from, uh, away from it. Uh, on to case. Uh, the power vacuum. The idea with the whole power vacuum is that by leaving. Uh, we're just going to continue that uh, on the all right. Uh, uh, okay, so the opposition says that um, she will analysis uh, for uh, that the opposition says that there's no alternative to our that the, the, the opponents has no alternative to our plan, and in the opposition world, we still die. Uh, ISIS is currently still winning, and in the government world, in the government world, we will be able to just we will be able to stop and halt ISIS. We would essentially destroy them because uh, uh, with these airstrikes. They are, like my partner said in his last week, these are not just random, uh, we're not just trying to uh, random uncontrolled airstrikes. Uh, we are currently, by, by equating a more efficient method of uh, having this actually declare and set up a work, where we're, we're, we're able to, we're not just like going out and using like, Obama's not just able to go out and say, let's go attack and strike here and there, just wherever we want, because he will no longer have the power. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a controlled way to use our, our military force, not simply just go out and uh, allow Obama to do what he wants. And they, uh, just to, actually, uh, yeah, and uh, continue on to the, the next the voter, uh, the impact calculus. The probability of our stuff actually happening is very realistic. Uh, while they may have statistics and, and uh, uh, well, so, well, they may have some statistics as to like how, why, why things may work. We have like evidence work that shows. We also have evidence that shows like more, more accurately and with specific examples. Like we are, we have, uh, like for example, just like the top ones we're talking about, like what happens in the, uh, in the Senate. Like, we have exam specific examples, specific uh, opponents to, uh, for, to our leader, um, uh, uh, to the minority leader. Uh, the probability of these things actually happening are far more, are far more probable uh, than theirs. Um, our time, our time is ASAP. As soon as we are able to implement the plan, uh, our Congress will, like we said, our uh, our time frame was now. As soon as we, uh, as soon as you vote for affirmative, we will be able to start uh, taking down ISIS uh, through our through the drones we, and through the actual call of like through the actual call of like having to go to war and not just uh, go out and like strike. Uh, the time, the time actually links to. Oh. Uh, actually, I'm not talking, so I, for those reasons, please vote for the government. <laughs> Then when you get up to respond to it, you don't even get through all the responses. So like at that point, arguments are flowing into it, and so pretty much that point is going to guarantee um, guarantee my ballot. Um, but even general and beyond that, had you got to anything, they do a better job at explaining to me like how we get to the problems, how we get to the impact. So if you look at the um, just like the the case turns inside of this, like. Massive amounts of stuff, right? They talk, they talk about uh, galvanizing ISIS, and you, you know, you come and you kind of address this. You're like, no, you destroy the bases. There's not enough left. You guys probably could have responded to that a little bit better in showing that. But for the most part, the guerrilla warfare outweighs that because even if they take out their bases, they're still going to be successful in being able to get in there and operate and grow the way they are. So, like, it's a wash at best case in that. But the responses on the inaccuracy of airstrikes and the massive amount of civilian deaths, and then the impact scenario beyond that, and the fact that they're depleting groundwater and like killing people for generations, at the point where you don't really answer those things and deal with that beyond like you know, a power vacuum that will help out, um, like they're winning the round at uh, at that point. So 
And the best advice that I can give you all is to try to work on the organization and at the very least make sure that you go on the line by line that you get to everything inside of it. Because when stuff is hanging out, that's always going to, uh, to lose you the round inside of there. Um, a couple things, don't waste time. Like if they kick a tee and it's done and there's nothing offensive on it, you don't really need to go back in an LMR and, uh, and deal with that type of stuff um, because that's just going to be, uh, be time suck inside of there. Um, put your arguments on there, protect yourselves, but then get on to the actual like main bulk of the case. Like literally, that, I think that was their strategy here was to get to spread you out a little bit on answering the T. Y'all seem pretty freaking topical to me inside of there, and so it's a good strategy, but you have to watch out, um, watch out for it. Um, so the whole like taking prep time out of your own time is a new one. Um, yeah. On me. I don't know that it's necessary. I don't know. I, we just wanted to make sure that our strategy was solid before okay. we just went into it. I think um, seven or eight seconds just to make sure that we're solid. Okay. Isn't, you know, just like, like as you're finishing up the speech, I still think it's better just to kind of have that going and keep oh, going inside of that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little weird on my truck. Understandable. <laughs> but anyways, um, but yeah, if you guys want to come and chat with me later you know, about specifics and questions, I'm more happy to get more depth, but that's the basic route of where I'm I'll try to write some more comments on here for you all. All right. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.